Okay everyone, welcome to the second video in the series of FS15 uh, Farming Simulator FS15 map making. Uh, if you haven't watched the first video, I'd strongly recommend you do so now. That would be a tutorial number one for SF uh, for Giants Editor for FS15. Uh, that video showed you how to get a copy of the editor that we've got in front of us now and also a copy of the blank map which are, we're about to start up. So when you first open the editor, and there's actually a few ways you can do it. You can open the editor, let's close it down and then open it back up again. From your, uh, wherever you've downloaded it to, you can double click on the editor to open it. And then go to File, Open, and then go to the map folder that you're working on, that you've got your map saved under. Mine is My New Map, and then Map. And that's in the documents, my games, farming simple 2015, mods, my new map, and there, and that's the i3d file. That is the main file that you need to open. So select it and then open, or double click on it, and it will open up the map. Just takes a couple of seconds. Right, that's one way. I'm going to close it because I want to show you the other way. Is just to open up the map in the same way as we did. We've got uh, my games, Farming Simulator 2015, mods folder, the name of your map, I've got three here, the name of your map, click on that map part, and in here you'll see the 3D, uh, i3D file, you can double click on that. Now I've got two versions, the old one and the newer one, which I still need the old one now again, so it comes up with the option. You, you wouldn't necessarily get that, but if you do, select the newest one and then double click on it and it will open up the map just the same. Another way you can open up is open up the editor and then go to file, uh, recent files and click the top one that's the last one you worked on. So you could do that as well if you've already been in. Now let's turn away from that for a second <laughs> just so you don't get distracted. There are several windows that we can have at the sides open to help us with map making. These windows down the sides are very, very important. So we're going to set these up first of all. What we've got at the top here are the usual things you would find. It's File, Edit, Create, View, Window, and Help. I'll explain these in some detail, but we don't have to worry too much about most of them. But we have to open up some windows so that we can see what we're doing. First one we're going to need is called Scenograph. So click on that and you'll see the Scenograph window. Now I'm going to open it quite a bit so that we can see what we're doing. But you can make that as small or as big as you want. There are several other windows that we're going to open and I'll show you how to open each one at this stage. Um, you don't necessarily need them all open but I'll open them all up just now and I'll show you, I'll tell you briefly what they do then in more later tutorials I'll, tell, I'll show you exactly how to use the things in them. But it is strongly recommended that if you're going to follow through all my videos, that you set them up the way I'm going to set these up. And then you you can find things easier. Once you've got that, then you can change things around willy-nilly to whatever suits you best. We'll click on Window again and bring up Terrain Editing. Now that will pop up here and you can make that bigger or smaller, depending on, on what you're doing. If you're working a lot with uh, the terrain, keep this open. Don't worry about all these bells and whistles on here because you don't need a lot of it. Uh, this scenograph window is a sort of, these are all little folders covering everything that you've got in the map. So more details about these two windows later. Next one we need is attributes. So I click on attributes and I've got this coming up on the right hand side. At the moment it's blank because we don't have anything but if I click on a tree for example we've got certain attributes associated with that particular tree. Things we can change if we want to. Again, more details about that in another video. The other window we want to open up is user attributes. That doesn't give us much more information about a tree, but if we were to select, say for example, the farm silo, uh, not, sorry, bad, uh, storage barn, that's a bad example as well. There you go, potato heap. 
which is just the moving potato heap in the storage barn, it shows us what the fill type is, how much it moves when we use it, uh, how much the plane moves, and the uh, bit of uh, script that is actually activate, activated when we use it. Now, that's only a small amount on here, but in some of them there's a lot more information. Most of the time you won't need to deal with anything like that. So that's usually the four windows that we need. We can pretty much do away with that one unless we actually need it and we can make that... <coughs> apologize for coughing, uh, we can make that that little bit smaller. Now before we go through any of these details, uh, what I'm going to th go through is these buttons on the top. If we wanted to make a new i3d file, we'd click this one, which we don't tend to do for map making, that's more for modders I think, because you can't really make a blank map from just nothing. We can use that to open an i3d. Instead of going there and open, we can actually click on that one. Open i3d in text editor, not recommended. There is a better way of doing it than that. Reload the i3d file. You can, if you want to refresh it, you can do that. Save it when you're done and save it as, if you want to change the name that you've saved it in, it's an idea one, but I tend to use these anyway. Uh, then we've got uh, import i3d file uh, in all my videos when I explain that which is slightly more advanced I will be doing import from there I always use this I don't know why but uh, these buttons as undo and redo we haven't done anything yet so it's grayed out but that button is one of the best buttons on the game if you do something you think oh I shouldn't have done that like for example just a quick example, you suddenly end up with a big mountain that you didn't really want. Click on do, wonderful button. Um, there we've got a redo, see? Right, this one, if you click on that, what that does is allows the particle effects to be tested and sounds. It switches on the sounds and the particle effects. These particles tend to move a bit when you move around the map, but if you switch that on, you will see that the, um, the, the any particle effects, like the pulsing of this, oh, and there we can hear a sound of water as well, and the stereo effects, well, I'll move past it. Oh, and a sawmill as well. So that kind of opens up and starts all those processes even in the editor so that you can tell where the sounds are, what they sound like, and some of the particle effects. This one is local or world mode. Always have that selected. If you have that unselected, it makes it a little bit more difficult to navigate. These four buttons here are probably the most used buttons and clicked on buttons up here. This is for terrain editing if you want to change the land. That one is for painting down, uh, it's all, this is all grass at the moment, but if you wanted to paint down a dirt texture or asphalt texture, you would use that one. This one is for t painting the terrain meshes, like the cow mesh, chicken mesh and sheep mesh. Don't be tempted to just select that and paint, you, there's a lot more to it than that. This one is for painting down uh, field textures and crops. Okay, so these four vid uh, buttons here are quite important and I'll be showing you how to use these in the next video. These ones here, re reload all textures, reload textures, I don't tend to use them much. Uh, this one opens the script editor. Unless you're a scripter, you're probably not going to want that. Uh, these I don't, I don't think I've ever used them, to be honest. Okay, now, moving around the map, you can move your view left and right, and you can move your view up and down. How you do that is by holding down the left alt key constantly, holding, pressing down and holding the left mouse button, and that gives you that option, so it's sort of moving your head around. If you keep the uh, left alt key down and use your middle mouse button, you can go up and down and left and right so you can sort of pan around on a, on a horizontal plane. 
holding down left alt and using your right hand mouse button allows you to zoom in and out. So with a combination of those you can zoom in and out exactly where you want to be on the map. Like that spline there which is in the middle of nowhere. You can zoom in by using the right hand mouse button, move it slightly to the left using the middle mouse button and then zoom in again and you can get really close to like that little node there which is actually difficult to see because it's on a water background but so that's that's the idea of that. Now you're probably thinking I'm moving around a lot quicker than you are. Right down here the bottom right hand corner of the screen you've got nav speed. Mine is set to 64 but that's what I'm used to. It is rather fast. Using your keyboard number pad you can change that. If I change that right down to say 5 you'll notice now that my movements around the map zooming in and out and moving up and down with the middle mouse button are a lot slower. So I'll put that back up to around but well let's go even more. Let's go 120. You will see now that moving around the map is far quicker and zooming in and out is far quicker. So really you need to set that to whatever you're comfortable with. I have mine on around about 64 and that's what I'm used to. That's the speed that I move around when I'm editing. Uh, that's more or less it. That's got uh, the editor ready to use. Now, how we're going to use it and explain, I will explain all these things over here and I'll explain how to start making a map in all the future videos. But this video is purely and simply just getting the editor ready and the screens. Oh, one thing I didn't mention is this screen at the bottom here is the scripting screen. Now you can get rid of that if you want, but if you if it has if it's not there, just click on that and then click on scripting. What you will see here, if I open it right up, it gives you all the information about your PC, um, which is quite useful information. If everybody asks you, you can tell them what your PC is made of, <laughs> and it also uh, gives you, if you scroll down, any errors that you may have. If you bring in something that's got bad textures on it, it will tell you down here. So it's like a good uh, prior warning to going into the game to test anything and then finding out you've got an error. If you bring in a building or a, an object and put it in with the editor, if there's something wrong with it, it will tell you down here. It will always come up in the bottom with the last um, activity which in this case was me loading the map in and since then there hasn't been anything so that I know there's no errors which is hardly surprising because there's um, I haven't done much I haven't done anything in fact so that's just a very quick video to get the layout ready for map making there is a little bit more to it some more specialist features uh, like these but these are kind of specialist at the moment you don't really need them uh, we'll talk about them as we go through the next videos. So thank you for watching. Um, if you've skipped video number one, I would suggest that you have a quick look at that because that will tell you how to get this editor downloaded and this map as well. Okay, thanks for watching. The next video will show you the basics of uh, starting to put things down on the your new map. Okay, thank you for watching.